Hey guys, so today I want to talk about the more expressive options of the Moog um, Model 15 iOS app uh, that I have in front of me right here. I've been playing around with this for a couple of days and I have to say I was truly impressed with all the options that you have and how beautifully it, it's designed and it's also still pretty easy to work with, at least if you're a little bit familiar with uh, modular synthesis. So today I want to talk about this Animoke keyboard, uh, which is, um, it has a little bit more options than the regular keys that we see right here. It has some, some options to make more expressive sounds. And with expressive, I mean that um, while we're playing the sound, while we're playing the keys, um, we have the ability to not only um, change the notes or like enter new notes as with any keyboard, but also to, to adjust some other parameters. Um, so for example, what this keyboard does is it sends aftertouch and if I hit a key you can see an orange line in the middle and you can sort of drag that up and in this case I have connected that to the filter cutoff so uh, while you're playing with this you can um, not only sort of glide to the other notes but you can also open the filter more for individual notes um, so let's just have a little play with this I'm gonna play maybe a, a few bars just so you can hear the sound of that and then we're going to create a new patch and sort of uh, i'll show you how to set that up Right, so pretty cool. We can actually start feeling like musicians with a with keyboard like this more so than with the regular keys. So um, what I'm going to do, I've also um, connected an external keyboard so I could actually uh, hide this and play that one. Um, but we'll see where we, where we end up. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is check my settings. Um, I'm going to make sure that I have my external keyboard connected, which you can see it's now connected through Bluetooth. Um, we could also connect it through a, a network card, um, or we can just use the, the uh, lightning port on the iPad. Uh, they have so many options for connecting and sharing audio and saving presets. It's really cool. So um, from there, I'm going to open my browser in the top left, and I'm going to hit new preset. So we start all the way fresh. So right now we get a completely blank patch and we won't have any sound yet because we won't have anything, we don't have anything connected. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to double tap the sawtooth output right there. And I can use two fingers to sort of um, scroll down or to zoom in and out. Um, so I'm going to double click, double tap that and send that to the first input of the mixer. So now that sawtooth of the oscillator goes to the mixer. And because I have these buttons on the side on, um, it's already that oscillator is already going to receive pitch information from the keyboard. So I don't actually have to send my pitch CV to the to the oscillator to track the pitch. That will that will work because of these um, handy buttons right there. And then while I'm at it, I might also add a sign and I also sent that to the mixer and well let's just keep keep it um, at that for now and then what I want to do is I want to take the output of my mixer which is not that one but this guy and I want to send that into my filter right here so so far we still won't have any sound because the filter is not going anywhere so I'm going to take the output from the filter and send it to my voltage controlled amplifier or VCA a very important step and then finally I'm going to take the signal output from that VCA and route it to one of my trunk lines which is basically your output so now um, we in theory we should have sound so let's see what happens if I raise the fixed control voltage right here and then I play a few keys 
So you hear that we have sound, but it keeps going forever. And that's because we still need to set up an envelope. So let's go to our envelope generated right here. Let's click the output and let's connect that to the control input of our um, VCA. And now let's try that again. So actually in this case, our node stops when we release a node, which is good. So I'm gonna hide this again, and I'm gonna just mess with my envelope settings a little bit. I want a bit of a slower attack. By the way, if these cables at any point get in the way, you can uh, double click or double tap with two fingers to make the, the cables more transparent, um, which I actually find a little bit more convenient than the, than the solid cables. Um, let's give it some sustain. And a bit of release. Okay, let's see what that sounds like. All right, um, that's a little bit much of a release. Let's dial that back a little bit. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to connect the 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 animal keys the the aftertouch of this, which is again that orange bar that you see. Right now, that doesn't do anything. So I want to connect that to my filter cutoff. And to do that, we scroll down here, and here you see all of your MIDI controllers. We have pitch control there, um, we have modulation, we have velocity, and we have aftertouch. That's the one we want. So we're going to double click aftertouch and route it into the control input of this filter. And now, if we play that keyboard, we can open the filter uh, on each key. Now, if I go to, if I hold a note on this keyboard and then I slide to a next note, let's let's hear what happens. You can hear it sort of step to that other note. So even though you can just slide your finger and will re-trigger, um, we don't actually get that smooth sort of pitch change. And um, to if we do want that, we would have to set the glide here in the top left, uh, bottom left actually. And if we set it pretty high, it will take longer to glide to that new node. Right, so that's a cool one to mess around with. And while we're talking about expression, what I also want to do is I want to change the range of my pitch wheel. So the pitch wheel is that left wheel you see on the side there, and um, it can actually transpose the keyboard up. And the amount at which it transposes that up is set in the settings. So let's go to that and let's go to MIDI and change the pitch band range to 12 so that we can um, transpose the whole keyboard an octave. All right, and um, this is going to be nice to play around with later on. Okay, so um, let's let's do a couple more things to sort of make this patch a little bit nicer um first thing maybe to do is set up um, something else to control the filter cutoff as well and let's use the second envelope for that and route that to one of the control inputs and then we're gonna change that envelope a little bit let's give it a slower So right now, I don't really like this, uh, how extreme it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to route this through an attenuator. And an attenuator can sort of um, reduce the signal level. And basically, it reduces the amount of modulation. So I can double click here and then on the cable and then double click next to it to remove it. And then I can set it up again. But this time, I route it through an attenuator. And then I'm going to route that to the control input. And now we can use this knob here to control the amount of modulation. So let's try that again. So now it's just a nice and subtle effect. Um, let's add a little bit of a delay to that. So I'm going to set the mix here of the delay 
and I'm going to set some delay time. Now this this delay effect, we don't actually need to patch that. Um, this one and the recorder, which you can see on the right side here, um, are both sort of inserted after the main output. So actually after those trunk lines that you see um, on the right here. So um, this delay, we can just we can just set the mix and it should work right away. <laughs> So that's pretty nice. Um, let's set up one more thing, which is our, actually let's set up two more things. Let's um, set up the modulation wheel, which is the, the other wheel we can find on the keyboard interface. And let's set that to control the mix of our delay effect. So now we can set the delay mix all the way down. We can open our keyboard and we can play it out. Which is gonna sound completely dry, but then when we set the mod wheel all the way up, it's gonna be completely wet. Which you can hear a little bit better if I set a higher feedback number. All right, so that gives us another layer of control, and then. Um, Finally, what I'm going to do is set up the velocity. Now the velocity, let's set that up, let's do something crazy. Let's set that up to control the timing of our um, delay effect. So you can hear those very funky effects there. That is the classic effect of modulating the delay time. It will give sort of a pitch sweep because it's going to lengthen or shorten the cycles of the waves that, that we're hearing. Um, so I'll, I'll leave you with that for now, just a short, uh, short introduction on, on getting more expressive sounds with this, um, with this modular 15 app, uh, model 15, I should say. Um, I'd also like to take this time to point out that I will um, be starting a full uh, overview of modular synthesis on iOS, which will uh, feature this synth heavily, as well as um, the Ripple Maker synth. So, um, which is another, like another style sort of modular synthesis, a completely different, uh, something we call West Coast synthesis, a more modern approach to modulars. Um, but I will be showing both those apps and it will be a pretty extensive overview to, to what you can do with those. All right, so uh, thank you for watching and I'll uh, see you in the next video.